So next I am going to talk about Pygmalion, 1912 play. It was first performed in 1913 with the famous Mrs. Patrick Campbell doing the role of Eliza Doolittle. You perhaps know that Pygmalion is a Greek sculptor. He made a beautiful sculpture of a woman, Galatia, and fell in love with this woman. And she became, fell in love, love with this sculpture and she became a woman. This story has been told by Gilbert. Remember Gilbert and Sullivan? They are the famous opera makers of the Victorian period. Gilbert made Pygmalion and Galatia. It is from that play that uh, Bernard Shaw sourced the story of this play. Gilbert and Sullivan produced uh, operas such as uh, Patience which attacked the uh, aesthetic movement. Ida, Princess Ida which is an adaptation of Tennyson's Princess etc. What is happening in Pygmalion? What, why is this play so important? Let me tell you that at first. Shaw is tearing apart the hypocrisies and pretensions of the upper class society. Through the uh, character Eliza Doolittle being turned into a duchess by Henry Higgins, Shaw is showing that just appearance or accent does not make uh, a lady or a gentleman. If you are dressed uh, richly and if you speak a better accent, that doesn't mean you have become an aristocrat. Henry Higgins is an aristocrat, but the way he deals with Eliza, the language he uses, the way he ill-treats her, that shows that he's actually not such a great man, even though he's born in the aristocracy. So like in Great Expectations, etc., or David Copperfield, etc., what makes a gentleman? That is the, like in Oscar Wilde plays also, Oscar Wilde's plays also expose the hypocrisies of the upper classes in Victorian periods. Pygmalion shows what makes class is not what you always think. It is not just the show of uh, life that matters in class. The play begins, as you might know, in a bus stop in Covent Garden. Covent Garden is a very rich place and it is the seat of a lot of theatres. And uh, this is a place where all kinds of people meet. The poor people like Eliza who are selling, who is selling flowers in the street. Henry Higgins and Colonel Pickering who are learned men. And also the Ainsford Hills, a family of mother, son and daughter. They are all taking shelter in the um, bus stop of Covent Garden during a rainy day. Henry Higgins is a scientist of phonetics and Colonel Pickering is a linguist of Indian dialects. Their names we don't know at the beginning. When they are all standing in the uh, bus stop, Henry Higgins bets with uh, Colonel Pickering that he can completely transform the Cockney speaking Covent Garden flower girl Eliza Doolittle. Eliza is sitting there and selling flowers, speaking in Cockney dialect. Henry Higgins says, within some time I can completely transform this woman to speak like a duchess, to appear like a duchess. Eliza hears this but doesn't say anything. Pickering wants Henry Higgins to do it. After the rain, everybody goes to their own respective homes. And the next day, Henry Higgins and Pickering are sitting there in Higgins's house when Eliza turns up at the door. And Eliza wants to be turned into a Dutch, I mean, to speak better English. Eliza says, you had to, uh, uh, told your friend that you had, you can turn me into a, to speak better English so that, I want to learn better English so that I can work in a flower shop. And Pickering goads him on, agrees to cover all the expenses of the experiment. And Higgins decides to turn Eliza into a duchess by her, by his, uh, you know, training. Mrs. Pierce, the uh, housekeeper, dresses her in pretty clothes, like an uh, upper class woman. And... Uh, Eliza is trained by Higgins. Eliza speaks in a Cockney dialect. When Higgins asks her to speak, to say this line, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. 
Eliza says, the rhine in spine falls mildly on the pline, <laughs> like a cockney. And after some training, uh, Henry Higgins' housekeeper and mother Mrs. Higgins are against this experiment. Don't play with people's lives. The housekeeper wants to know what will happen to Eliza after this. I, is he going to pay her? Where is she going to work after this? If she acts like a duchess, what? there will be a clash of her class with the duchess's class. She will not be a duchess. She can only act like a duchess. And uh, Eliza is starting to act like a duchess. At first something happens. Eliza uh, runs away from uh, Higgins and takes shelter in Mrs. Higgins' house. Higgins is a very rough man. He doesn't treat Eliza properly. He doesn't respect her. After all, she is a flower girl. But Colonel Pickering respects her. And when Eliza goes and runs away and goes to Mrs. Higgins' house, this man, Higgins, is scared what happened to Eliza. And Mrs. Higgins, her views on the issue, we come to know then. Another thing that happens is Alfred Doolittle, the father of Eliza, comes. He has been marrying several times. He's a lower class man. And he has come for money. And he asks five pounds. But when Henry Higgins gives him ten pounds, he doesn't take it. He wants only five pounds. So in so subtle ways we see the features of these people and their, their class features. And they are not... Whether they are upper class or lower class, there is a mix-up of nature there. Upper class people are not completely great and, um, you know, conforming to their class. Eliza Doolittle, sorry, uh, Ains, Mrs. Ainsford Hill ill-treats her son so much. She is very bossy. And uh, Alfred Doolittle is not just a cheap man. Even though he has come for money, he doesn't want 10 pounds. So, in subtle ways, the humanity of these people is brought out. And in Higgins' house, when Mrs. Ainsford, Mrs. Higgins' house, when Mrs. Ainsford Hill and uh, her children, Clara and Freddie, come, Eliza goes there like a duchess and talks to them and these uh, Eliza is there the Ainsford Hills are not able to understand that Eliza is actually a cockney girl she is successfully speaking like a duchess and at that point Freddie also falls in love with her Freddie Ainsford Hill a rich upper caste upper class man but he is treated like a servant like, like a servant by his mother Freddie thinks wow she is a duchess, but how straightforward she is, how down to earth. Because the upper class women are usually not straightforward or down to earth. She is talking about the Spanish flu. Our Eliza is talking about the Spanish flu and about her uncle and aunt. And she is speaking in a very natural way. Freddie loves it. And then it is reported that later the ambassador's garden party occurs. And Eliza's performance there was a resounding success. Eliza won the trial. Higgins and Pickering are now happy and kind of bored with the project. But then Eliza doesn't know what will happen to her. Will she be accepted into their class? She, they have completely changed uh, Eliza. And now what will happen to Eliza? What job will she get? She has lost her position in her class and she has not come properly into the upper class either. And she is angry with Henry Higgins for making her take his slippers and everything. And one day uh, she quarrels with Higgins and throws his soft bathroom, bedroom slippers at his face and says she is going to work with his enemy Nipomak when linguist is there. Whether she will marry Freddie or go to work with Nipomak or go back to her flower selling, we don't know. Anyway, this play doesn't really bother about what happens to Eliza. That is not the exciting end of the play. The play ends with exposing the classes. Exposing the class is the uh, main theme of the play. Eliza throws slippers at Henry Higgins and he accuses her of ingratitude. And uh, 
then we higgins really realizes that eliza is a powerful girl she is a girl of character he admires her eliza recognizes that higgins will never accept her because he is destined to be a bachelor and probably she can marry freddy but we don't know whether that will happen because after all she is not um, duchess so this play is about speech versus appearance and how it is related to social class shaw's play explores aspects of language and its connection with identity just because you speak a certain language do you have that identity is it okay to judge a person in terms of language and appearance that is the theme uh there was actually nothing wrong with eliza's natural way of speaking to speak cockney is also perfect it's okay but the play exposes society's hypocrisy in looking at cockney as if it's, it's something unnatural or abnormal the play presents the fact that language or accent or slang is simply a habit and uh, you know you can't judge a person by that the the play also talks about femininity and gender roles the title of shaw's shaw's play obviously intertextually connects with pigmalion and in the story pigmalion scorns all the women around him and makes a sculpture of an ideal woman the sculpture is so beautiful that the sculptor falls in love with the sculpture like that higgins molds eliza into an ideal woman but is she an ideal woman is there an ideal woman can she be that model that she made of that he made of her you know to be an ideal woman she will have to pretend to be somebody that she she is not she is not really that ideal she will have to pretend and eliza tells higgins that she wants independence she does not want to be pigeon holed into anything she just wants to live naturally so these themes are very strong themes in pigmalion and pigmalion is a very important play of bernard shaw